this is deepak kumar assistant professor in kite group of institution in this lecture we will understand the concept of attrition and recursion and we just compare recursion and attrition so now what is recursion as we know that when we call a function within a function then this is the concept of recursion and when we use a loop through which different set of instructions are repeated so this is basically the concept of iteration actually in recursion as well as in iteration we repeat some set of instructions but these repetition the process of these repetition is different in recursion as well as in iteration in recursion with the help of function call we repeat set of instructions while in iteration with the help of loop we repeat set of instructions so the process is different in recursion as well as in iteration when we use uh, the concept of recursion then it make sorter program but when we use the concept of iteration then the program is little bit lengthy still in the trade off between recursion and iteration the iteration is superior there than recursion we will understand it when we see the difference between recursion and iteration okay so now we will move towards the difference between recursion and iteration the very uh, common difference between recursion and iteration is that in recursion the recursion is always applied to the function while iteration is applied to the set of instruction which we want to repeat okay so now the further differences are as we earlier discussed that the basic difference is that the function when the function is called itself within the function then this is the case of recursion and it in iteration we generally use the concept of loop through which we repeat some set of instructions so if we are talking about format of recursion and in and iteration then we know that in recursion only base condition is given so with the help of base condition we terminate the recursive program or the concept of recursion so let's see if we have the program of factorial 5 so we want to calculate the the value of fact 5 with the help of recursion so first of all we provide the base condition also so if n is equal to 0 then return 1 so this is what this is your base condition or we can say that the terminating condition for function call so if this base condition is not true then we will move towards this one that is n cross fact n minus 1 and this process repeat this function calls repeat until this base condition is true okay so for terminating the recursive program only base condition is given why in iteration we use initialization we have controlling conditions and we have updated statement within the loop also 
Just see here, we have an example of for loop. Here we initialize the value of i, that is 0. Then we have controlling condition. And then we have addition of the value of i. So <coughs> the format is different for recursion as well as iteration. When we are using a recursion, then recursion basically use the concept of a stack. How it will use the concept of a stack? Let's see over here. Actually, we know that whenever we write a C program, then the main memory is basically divided into four sections. The first section is your coding section. The next section is your variable section, static and global variable section. And the next one is your stack sections. Within a stack, we just store the local variables. And after that, we have heap structure, where heaps in, in heap section, the dynamic memory allocation can be performed. So right now, we are just talking about the stack section of main memory. So we know that, let's suppose, we want to calculate fact 5. So when we use the concept of recursion, so here we use n cross fact n minus 1. And this process repeated until n is equal to 0. So when we use fact 5, so here 5 cross fact 5 minus 1 that is 4. So this is basically the activation record of 5 cross 4 factorial. Then again this 4 factorial is called. So it will become 4 cross 3 factorial. Then 3 factorial will call. It will 3 cross 2 factorial. Then 2 factorial will call. It is 2 cross 1 factorial. And then when factorial is called that is 1 cross 0 factorial. So here n is equal to 0. So when n is equal to 0, then return 1. That means this is your terminating condition. We know that 0 factorial is equal to 1. So this is basically the activation record for different function call. When n is equal to 5, then this is the activation record for fact 5. When n is equal to 4, then this is the activation record of fact 4 and so on. Okay? And then these values are transferred. Okay? So now what is the value of fact 1? It is 1. Now this 1 value is placed over here. So 1 factorial is what? That is 1. So 2 cross 1 factorial is 2. Now this 2 value is placed in 2 factorial. So what is 2 factorial? 2 factorial is 2. So 3 cross 2 factorial is 6. So fact 3 is what? It's 6. Now we just place the value of fact 3 over here. So what is the value of fact 3 is 6. So 4 multiplied by 6 is 24. That is the value of fact 4. And this fact 4 value is placed over here. That is 24. Then we perform 5 cross 24. That is 120. Okay. So the activation record or we can say that the stack is required when we use recursion. While in iteration, there is no use of stack. So uh, the next comparison basis is condition. So if the function does not converge to some condition called base condition, then it leads to infinite recursion. So as we know that when we are using, uh, when we are calculating fact 5, so the base condition is n is equal to 0. But let's suppose if this base condition is not given, then the function call itself repeatedly. Okay, that is known as the concept of infinite recursion when there is no base condition. In iteration, if the controlling condition is not given, so the loop becomes infinite. Okay, 
So if the control condition in the iteration statements never become false, if it always true, then it leads to infinite iteration. Infinite recursion can crash the system because large space is required when we perform function call. That means recursion. And when there is a condition of infinite iteration, then it uses CPU cycles repeatedly. Now, the next comparison is your overhead. Uh, recursion have a overhead of repeated function call, while in iteration there is no overhead. So that's why actually uh, iteration is superior than the recursion because in recursion we have the overhead, while in, in iteration there is no overhead. If you are talking about speed, so the speed of recursion is slow, the program execution becomes slow, why? Because in recursion there is an overhead, while in, in iteration the speed is fast because there is no iteration over there. So as I earlier told you that when we use the concept of recursion, then it reduces the size of the program. Well, iteration makes the code longer. Recursion is always applied to the function only. While iteration is applied to the set of instruction within the loop. So these are basic differences. And with the help of these differences, we came to know that the recursion have an overhead as well as the speed of recursion is very low. Hence, the performance of recursion is low in comparison to iteration. So now we come into the conclusion that the recursive function is easy to write. Yes, it is write, easy to write. Why? Because the program is shorter, but they do not perform well as compared to iteration. Why? Because the speed is very slow and the recursion have an overhead. The iteration is hard to write because the program is lengthy. But their performance is good because why the performance is good, good, uh, good in iteration? Because there is no overhead and the speed is very fast in comparison to recursion. So this is all about your uh, recursion and iteration concept and their comparison. Now we will meet in our next lecture. Thank you so much.